as you see, this is a paper with many authors. Yeah, just checked on here. Um, more interestingly, I should say there's a reason why I put myself last in this list because really most of, I mean, much of this work is already done when they got me on. I mean, really it should be Chris Fawcett speaking here. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it. I'm also not going to read off the title. Um, this here is basically a pretty good picture of what you're trying to do. Okay, you can also check down here. Um, a little more specifically, we're trying to predict the runtime that the planner will take on a planet task without even running the planner. Okay, so it's pretty much like crystal ball prediction kind of problem. Uh, we're going to apply a pretty fairly standard approach called em empirical performance models, uh, known in SAT, for example. It's really all about defining features for prediction, but let me not get ahead of myself. So, empirical performance model is really a fairly simple idea. Okay. I decided to uh, illustrate it to you using an um, asterisk. So um, here you see uh, the culprit, okay? Uh, he's trying to steal a wagon. And if you speak French, you can check against the text. And so we need to decide how to deal with this guy, okay? In order to do so, we take his fingerprint. And I hope that, well, I believe that law in the real world doesn't work like that, but what we're gonna do is we compare his fingerprint against our database or history of fingerprints in the past, and then we take whichever fingerprint is closest to this guy's, we take a treatment we applied at that time. So we could decide to send him to prison or throw him to the lions or uh, uh, send him to a boat to, to row for the rest of his life. Okay. Now, I do hope that the connection to planning became obvious to you. Let it make a little more obvious. So the, the uh, culprit is a planning task. Fingerprint is the features. So something we can compute quickly that hopefully gives us some insight into the structure of the task which we then use for runtime prediction. So here we use ML technology on the features to predict the runtime. And then the treatment prison lion's boat is essentially which plan are we going to apply to solve this task. Okay. Uh, this paper here is only about the fingerprint. Uh, this thing here is not done. I just learned yesterday that the winning planner of the competition actually already does the whole thing. Um, so um, I'm a bit unsure now what they can actually still contribute. Well, our features here are better, so we do get better predictions, so hopefully if we integrate this into the portfolio approach, it might do even better. Okay, before, so it's all about the fingerprint, like I said, before I put on the next slide, let me check who is present, because I might have to apologize, but I think none of the relevant people is here. So let me just go, um, the history of fingerprints and planning, okay, features, um, has a long history, tradition, like 15 years back. Um, this is like the features we had, okay? It's like when you go to the US border, instead of putting your thumb onto a, an electronic scanner, it just takes a piece of paper, outlines the outline of your thumb with a pen, okay? And then they'll use that in order to identify um, the people who are immigrating. Obviously, most of us would look pretty similar under this, right? Okay, it's not really unique. Um, so it's not a good feature set that's what I'm trying to say, okay? Then uh, about 10 years later, we got a much better method for fingerprinting planning tasks, and then even better. And well, what I would like to try to argue is that with what they're doing here, we're finally approaching towards something that actually is worth the name fingerprint. Okay, so you see why I wanted to apologize to anybody who has worked on features before, but they're not here. I'm exaggerating completely here, okay. What I'm actually excited about, or what I find nice, is that for the first time, and I'm a bit flabbergasted that it's really the first time, they're actually trying to run the search for a little bit and measure statistics and what it does. And this really just seems like a very obvious thing to try, that very obviously might give you useful information, okay? So rather than just looking at the syntax, you look at you know, the actual <coughs> search. Good. Um, this here is just a boring text slide to make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, does everybody agree to just skip that? Yeah, yeah? okay, wonderful. So what are our features? Um, here's the table. Okay, let me explain these columns first. The benchmark set contains seven, 1,571 instances. If you know the question mark in your head, yes. Um, can I explain later? So I didn't assemble this. I mean, the, the guys are basically trying to be extremely comprehensive and selected everything that they found in the internet and it turned out to be 7,500. I'll get to this again later. Anyway, this here is uh, the number of instances on which the features could be extracted successfully. This here is like a qualitative measurement of the cost. The more quantitative one is here, so like the this will be the median, and this like 90% of the time it's as most as costly as this. The only really costly ones are the sad based features. Okay, so let me briefly explain everything with PDDL up front. This is like the, the previous stuff from uh, Roberts and Howe. 
with some extensions. LPG preprocessing is just what the name suggests, okay, some statistics on the mutexes and so forth. Uh, what I like, um, the things that I like, by the way, are red, okay, so uh, that I like specifically. So I'm glad that they use Torchlight. I'm not so glad that because of this huge benchmark set here, they actually ended up not using all the theory that I developed and instead using the trivial uh, sampling tool that I implemented for comparison. So what this really does is it takes some samples from the search space and then for each sample it runs a limited search around that state to check if it's a local minimum and then you can run some simple statistics on dead ends and so forth. Okay, so this is basically like sampling your state space, make a local analysis of what the search landscape looks like. Which is uh, simple but interesting. I mean, uh, obvious thing to try when you try to fingerprint the planning task. Uh, this stuff here is again what you would expect, some simple stats on what's going on in FD before the actual search. These here are exactly the features proposed by Senemore a few years back, uh, statistics on the causal graph and so forth. <coughs> FD probing is what I mentioned earlier, so uh, again an obvious idea, you just run the actual search you're gonna be using for a while, for a little while, it doesn't have to be long, and then you collect statistics on what happened, like how often was the next state better than the previous one, and so on. A uh, million things you can do, as you see it's only 16 features here, I think there's a lot of room for, you know, going into more depth in this area. And then finally, another obvious idea, and especially obvious given the author set, I mean, you know, just use the state-of-the-art set encoding and run setzilla on that. Okay, it gives us lots of features. Good. Uh, that's already done explaining what we did. Um, about the experiments, so it's pretty comprehensive also on the ML technology side, as you see. Turned out that something called random forests work best. And one important trick apparently, or that has also been very successful in SAT, is to not predict the actual runtime, but the logarithm of the runtime. It's quite intuitive, really. I mean, the runtime function is exponential in the size of the input, so if you take the logarithm, you get a linear function, and there's a certain chance that this will be more easy to predict with linear methods. Good. So, um, again, fairly comprehensive set of uh, planners, and now here's the um, 7000 thing, okay. So I wasn't yet present when they did it. Um, they took all the benchmarks from the IPCs and from the FD library and from the FF library, which means that like some of those domains are there three times, uh, perhaps with minor differences in the instance sets or whatever, it's really a bit hard to tell. And then also some domains that I don't think I've heard of. So like really fairly comprehensive. My, my, main, my main issue with this really is that there's some duplication in this benchmark set. So I think this is like the main weakness that this paper has at the moment. Good, nevertheless, uh, here's how they uh, cross validate. So this is a standard approach in ML. You basically, you know, select your training and testing examples randomly, 90% training, 10% testing. Leave one domain out is what we usually tend to think in planning about is generalization, right? You learn on a domain and you test on a different domain. So can we learn knowledge on something that will, useful to us, will be useful to us later on in different domains? Good. So here you see a um, way of visualizing the, um, predictive, the prediction correctness. On the left-hand side, it's just the PDDL surface level features from Robertson Howe. On this side here is all our features together. Uh, we plot like a true runtime, observed runtime against predicted runtime. Okay, so this family of points up here means that uh, we predicted it to take a long time whereas it was actually fast. And here we predicted <laughs> it to be fast while it actually took forever. Okay. And you see those populations here, here and here have become thinner on that side. So it means we do gain something by adding more informative features. Here the whole thing is um, broken down in a little more detail. So here you see a predictor that doesn't use any features, so it's like a blind guess, okay? This two here is like for the log 10 of the runtime. So a rough understanding is two orders of magnitude off, okay? Here we're just using the domain file and you see it goes down dramatically. So even just by doing this, it already is pretty good. And here again, I'm wondering if this might have something to do with duplication in the domain set, right? But so. Okay, subject to that, so just having the PDL surface already is really, really good. I mean, it helps you a lot in getting better predictions uh, as compared to a blind search. And after that, the learning curve does flatten off. So it does get harder and harder to, to you know, make better predictions by adding more features, but there are still improvements. <coughs> so just to give an example, 
Here, if you add the causal graph features for fast downward, you know, um, prediction performance gets better quite a lot by a very large margin. Down here, if you add the set features, which come in last, uh, like it's ordered by increasing cost of computing the features. For example, the prediction for NP gets a lot better, which is kind of expected, right? Okay, and uh, I think I'm there. So, uh, what we have, to keep it short, is something that looks like this. And of course, what I'm asking myself is whether we can get something that looks like this. And I mean, really, apart from this, like two major lines, apart from whether more features, two major lines are A, understanding better what our features are and how they perform. Like, for example, I would really like to quantify the gap between training data Thanks. and testing data and somehow see how generalization performs as a function of that gap. And also, of course, they want to build a planned SILA system. Now, as of yesterday, we already have one, but uh, let's see where it goes, and thanks. Question. Um, uh, when, when people have tried this approach on SAT, um, one of the most important gains they got is the ability to generate very hard instances. So can you, did you try that on planning or do you plan to try that on planning? You mean like use these insights to generate very hard instances? Yes, or, it, of, um, or generate instances of hardness that you know a priori before you generate them. It's an interesting idea. I've never heard of it and I haven't thought about it. And I don't know if the other guys have any plans to try that in planning. So I don't know, it's an interesting idea. That's all I can say. All right. Can I ask? Okay. Can, one more question, please. The correlation of runtimes. Um, this was on the training and the validation set, or the uh, or like the um, the left out domain. It's like is it this? Yes, exactly. This this correlation. No, no. Yes. So the, these problem instances have has the model seen them in the training or they're just the domain that you're saying that you have left out? No, it's cross-validation. I mean, so 90% like of the data set you don't see here, the remaining 10% the testing is what you see I in see. the picture. So it's the validation and the training set? Yeah, 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 Thank yeah. You. sure, of course. Thank you. Okay, so you pointed out one potential problem with the experiments already, right? With that we have domain duplicates and things like that. And we were discussing that quite a lot uh, with, with one of your co-authors. Um, I would like to make a suggestion for people doing stuff like that in the future, because it's actually a hard problem to deal with, because we also have these domains that are quite similar to each other, even though yeah, they're not yeah. the same. So I, what I would suggest is, as an experiment, train on everything that has been out like until a certain year, and then you know, evaluate on the ones that come, come later. That would also mirror how we actually implement planners for the competition. Can we have the past experience and we try it on the future? That's certainly one idea. I think I've seen this in a few papers, at least, like training up to 2008, testing on 2011. Uh, what I would really like to do is like structurally, like for example, in this taxonomy of mine, you know, if you train it on a simple class and try to predict on a half class, I would expect it doesn't work. On the other hand, if I have one representative of each class, perhaps I can build a predictor that gives me good prediction on the whole rest of it. So something like that, I would like to try to understand, you know, what these things actually do. And for the moment, I don't really know. But, yeah. Any more questions? Um, I found it interesting that the random walk planner seems to be the most predictable. Do you have any insight on why that happens? You mean Arvind up there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, no. All right, so I've got one final question. Uh, did you try predicting solution cost? Uh, not as I'm aware of. At the time when I got on the train, it was all about predicting runtime. I don't know if they attempted predicting cost just yet. All right, so let's thank the speaker again. And.